Hi guys. Today I had a completely different video planned than the one that I'm actually going to shoot. And I had a whole script planned out and everything, but I picked up something today that makes me want to throw this out the window because I just cannot wait to show it to you. Just what in the sweet spindler is this? I just picked this thing up a couple hours ago from a guy here in Philly. And this, what used to be a Mac SE has had a couple modifications done and I have not tried to turn this thing on. I have not taken it apart at all. I brought this thing upstairs, sat it on this desk and turned on the camera. So let's explore this thing together, see just what modifications are in here and see if this thing actually works together. So stay tuned. So of course the smart thing would be to take this apart first and check it over, but uh, let's just turn it on. All right, so it does boot and the mouse works. Uh, it's making noises like there's a hard drive in there, but it's not actually booting. Um, pushing the jazz drive button doesn't do anything. Pushing in what's left of the CD-ROM button doesn't seem to do anything. And of course, there's no floppy disk drive, so I can't boot it off of there. Let's give it a shot with the trusty floppy emu. All right, it does not seem to want to boot off of this floppy emu and I can hear the hard drive in here trying, but let's try something else. This thing actually came with an external jazz drive with a disc in it. And it even came with some, with one sealed brand new disc. So that's pretty cool. But maybe this external jazz drive has a boot folder on it and the guy who had this before said that this computer came from someone who used it to produce music. And I guess that kind of makes sense with all of these modifications. And look at that. Happy Mac. So the boot disc is the external jazz disc. So let's see if we can find any cool music stuff on here. So it seems to be taking quite a while to boot. All right. So I think this is about as far as it's going to get. It's not frozen but it's not progressing any further in this boot. So I think next step, let's tear this thing apart and see what's inside. Now, before we tear this thing apart, I do want to look it over a little bit because it's pretty impressive. Like if you look at how they did this CD-ROM and the jazz drive in here, I mean, that's like perfect. Like they really went out of their way to cut this stuff out nicely. So this I'm sure was just the original floppy drive here and this fit right in, but they really like cut this straight and there is no gap around this CD-ROM drive at all. That's very impressive. And the paint job actually isn't that bad. It's messed up up top because the last guy I got this from, he tried to remove this black paint, but the paint itself, I don't know what kind of paint they used, but it's very nice. Like it feels kind of factory. It feels like the plastic is not painted at all. It's just black. So I'd be really interested to see what kind of paint they use and if I could even find it because I'm kind of torn on what to actually do with this machine. So my first thought of course was, well, we should try to bring it back to stock maybe just stock with these drives in here, but I kind of really like this black. And look, they even went through the trouble of taking the Apple logo out when they painted it. So I kind of think we should find a black paint like this and bring this back to the original owner's original vision. So let me know what you think in the comments below, but that's the direction I'm leaning in. And if you look at the back, there's some more cool stuff. 
There is no speaker inside here, obviously, because the drives are taking up that space. But they did route this speaker cable, or a speaker wire, rather, out the back. So you could plug a speaker into here. And this does have an Ethernet card, which is very nice. along with the normal assortment of Mac SE ports. And at one point, there was a programmer switch in here, we can see, because it's kind of gunked up right there, but that's not actually gunked up. That's just uh, some of the black paint has worn away. All right, well, I was all ready to take this guy apart, and I broke out my trusty Mac cracker with the extended T15, and it turns out that somebody has uh, replaced the screws in here with standard flathead screws. So I guess somebody was tired of trying to fashion a Mac cracker. And uh, good thing I have my trusty screwdriver with the neat extending tip. So let's crack this open. Oh my God, it is weirder in here than you could have even imagined. All right, so we need to go handheld because we need to look up close and personal on this thing and I need to show you all this crazy stuff that's going on inside. So first of all, in the front case, we have four just random speakers stuck into place with uh, some kind of glue and just all wired together and held up with a lot of brown craft tape. And that wire goes all the way over here into this spaghetti mess, which is the main machine. And we can see we have a very handy Asante MacCon Ethernet card. But what's interesting about that is if we look way down in there, we can see a white connector. And that white connector is part of the MacCon card for the SE30, not the SE. So that's one clue that this computer is actually an SE30 motherboard inside of a Mac SE. And we can see the continued theme of brown craft tape holding all these speaker wires together and some other kinds of tape on top of tape. And we can see there actually is a hard drive in here. And that hard drive is mounted with some kind of other tape, just I think taping it to the top of the drive caddy. So we have the CD-ROM, we have the zip drive, or the jazz drive rather, which is probably the only thing that's actually hard connected to the case. And then taped on top of that is this SCSI hard drive. And then we have what's probably some Molex splitters in here connecting all of these drives together. And the hard drive is fully connected, but I can't see to where, but it was trying to spin up and I could hear it, but it never, I don't think quite read. So I think what we should do is start digging into this spaghetti madness and see if we can find out what kind of board is in here and if we can maybe salvage some of these drives. So first, I think we should extricate this back case from these uh, speaker wires so I can actually, you know, pull these two halves apart without worrying about, you know, ripping out components from the actual computer. So fortunately, it looks like these wires weren't soldered on. They were just kind of twisted on and taped on there with electrical tape. So, yep, we can just kind of untwist these wires and get this out of here.
All right, so next I want to get this Ethernet card out of here. And here we have the top half of the Asante MacCon Plus TKTP Revision B. And then we have the board here plugged into the motherboard, which is going to be kind of a pain to take out. Actually, not too bad. And yeah, this is the SE30 version of it, which I guess gives more credence to the fact that this is probably an SE30. Yeah, this is going to be very difficult to get this motherboard out of here because it's connected inside, but all these crazy drives are in the way. So I need to get like down in here to unplug the power from the motherboard. All right, so I was able to get in there with a screwdriver tip and kind of pull the uh, latch guy down. And if we look in here, this is actually in pretty poor condition. So I think that this person connected this and kind of like jammed it in place. And I think he jostled around this motherboard a lot when he, he or she built this Darth Macus madness here. And we can see down here the clever use of tape wrapping all the way around <laughs> to make sure these drives are nice and secure, just like they would be from the Apple factory. So as expected, this is an SE30 motherboard that was stuck into this SE with the 68030 processor right here. And well, the first thing we can do, of course, is replace this little purple doom here. This clock battery was from 1989, and it's a wonder it has not yet leaked. And we can throw in a new fresh battery here. There we go. And we've got a full bank of memory, although I don't know how big these chips are. I got to think this is at least 32 megs of RAM in here, maybe even 64. I don't want to take them out because these RAM sockets are incredibly fragile and I already broke one on my real SE30. But one idea I did have just to see what kind of life this machine has is we can take out this stock ROM chip and put in this big mess of wires chip that I pulled out of my other SE30 because on here is a RAM disk with System 6 on it. So we can boot off of this and it will 100% boot instead of worrying about finicky drives and external jazz drives and all that jazz. So why don't we stick this in there, try to finagle this board back in and see if this computer starts and sees any of these other drives.
and I don't see any obvious leaking on the board, although I am in no way an expert, so if you notice any, let me know, but all of these caps seem more or less okay, maybe a little sludge coming out of this one, but hopefully this board is pretty good. And I figured out where these crazy speaker wires go. Down in this little hole here, you can maybe see the CD-ROM and the speaker wires are actually connected via some craft tape to the wires coming out of the CD-ROM. So that was actually meant to take CD audio to those four janky speakers in the back of the case. So that's pretty clever, I guess. Makes this SE30 a nice CD player. And instead of any kind of socket, the wires were literally just stuck on there like this. So they were stuck to the pins and the pins went inside the wires themselves to make contact. So yeah, uh, not janky at all. And I would like to try to figure out why these internal drives weren't getting any power. Uh, the hard drive was, but the CD and jazz drive weren't. So I think I'm going to try to disconnect these and see what's up with this power splitter in here. And uh, I'm going to start by unrouting this janky speaker wire. So we've got this one splitter, or this one Molex connector coming off of uh, the analog board, plugged into this uh, splitter that says Origin China. And one of them is plugged into the hard drive here. And the other one is actually plugged into what looks like another splitter which is connected to the CD-ROM drive. And there is no power to the jazz drive. So I wonder if this person was not quite finished their project here. All right, so I've somehow managed to reconnect both the power and the SCSI to the motherboard, and I've slotted that back in here. And it now has the RAM or ROM disk on the big mess of wires pirate ROM. So I think let's plug it in and see if it blows up. Cord is plugged. Power on. Hey, it's booting off the big mess of wires. And all I did was disconnect and reconnect the CD-ROM drive, but it now shows some signs of life. We have a disc in here. <laughs> we have a disc in here called SE30 stuff. The CD-ROM seems to have a mind of its own. All right, so I hooked up a keyboard so I could push R for ROM disk. And look at that, we've actually booted. So here we are in our now living Darth Macus uh, <laughs> super special SE30. Uh, let's see how much memory is in here. Oh, okay. It would appear that we have 128 megs of RAM. So yeah, definitely was not expecting this to be a fully maxed out SE30 and with that original ROM, uh, this must have taken forever to boot. And maybe that was the issue before. Maybe it wasn't actually stuck on that Mac loading screen. 
maybe instead it was just doing the extended memory check, which could take like five minutes. So that kind of makes sense. All right, and you, you know what? It's also seeing the internal hard drive now. So look at this. So here is our ROM disk that we're booted from now. And here is what's on the original hard drive. We've got Adobe Acrobat, PageMaker, AppleWorks 5, Internet Explorer 2, multi-movie player. Does that actually work on here? Nope. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now I wonder if we can see what's on this CD here. It does not seem to want to read the CD-ROM, but that could be a driver issue. Maybe this ROM disk just doesn't know how to deal with the CD. And it's just kind of ejecting and closing itself over and over again. It's making a lot of funny noises, too. Well, I think there's something funky with that. Let's get this CD out of here. Okay, I think that'll about do it for now for this crazy Mac with a mind of its own. Uh, I think that we have a couple options here. We have a fully working SE30 with a 128 megs of RAM and its own mischievous spirit. So I think one thing we could do is try to restore it to as close to normal looking as possible uh, but another option would be to try to take this huge set of modifications to the level they could have been, which would include fixing up some of this case and maybe repainting it in black, figuring out the CD-ROM and the jazz drive situation, and maybe getting some more modern Molex splitters in here, and uh, doing something better with the CD audio than janky taped together cords and maybe we could get it to have some nice speakers mounted in here somewhere. So I want your opinion on this. Let me know in the comments below what you think we should do to this machine. Should we continue modding it to its logical conclusion and make it the best version of what it's trying to be that we can? Or should we try to restore this back to some semblance of a factory SE30? Either way, this is a super exciting find, and I'm so glad that this machine works. The screen is crisp and clear. It doesn't have any burn-in. And, uh, you know, they didn't do such a bad job with these crazy mods here. So I look forward to seeing what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, and if you'd like to find out what's on that SE30 CD, Please subscribe so you'll be notified when I post the next video. And thank you very much for watching.